What's up everybody? Today we're going to be going over how to change eye color using the local adjustments tool in Raw Therapy. Now, you might know this tool from the local tab over here. This is a new tab and a new tool in Raw Therapy 5.10, so it's gonna be really fun to learn how to use it. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is come over here to the exposure tab and change my processing profile back to neutral so we can just start from a base starting point. Then I will go down and just turn on the manually selected lens correction pro profile under the transform tab and that's gonna reselect my lens correction profile. Back under the exposure tab, I'm just gonna click auto and that will give me a good exposure compensation and then I'll open up this tone curve and I'm gonna add three dots, one in the center of the graph, one midway between the center and the top right dot, and one midway between the center and the bottom left dot. And now I'll kind of recenter that center dot, and I'm gonna give a nice S curve here. I don't want it to be too dark. The eye is a little bit in shadow, so it's gonna be important not to push the shadows too much. But now that I've done this, I can actually take my center dot and I can move it right and left. I can change the exposure pretty evenly. So I'm gonna move it to the right because I don't want the skin blown out too much. So I'll move that over and then I'll just smooth out my highlights here and my shadows one more time. And I find that this adds quite a bit of clarity. Uh, you can see that parts of the image that were not necessarily in focus are now in focus. And the last thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the saturation back a little ways because I feel like the white of the eye has turned quite blue and I feel like the red of the skin has gotten over accentuated after we added that contrast. Now, let's jump over into the local corrections tab and the local adjustments tool and let's turn that on. And the first thing that we can do with this tool is just click add. You can see here we have an oval mask. Now this oval mask uh, will always keep a circular shape. I can grab it in the center to move it around. I can grab one of these four points to change its shape, but it will always have this rounded edge. That's important because I can come up here to this show additional settings checkbox and check it on. And now we have some extra settings and one of them is spot shape. I can change the shape from ellipse to rectangle. And now I have a rectangle mask that I can use to place around, but I'm gonna switch it back to ellipse because we have this eye and an eye is circular. And then the spot method, we can change it from normal, excluding or full image. Of course, full image is just going to be whatever you apply here is gonna to apply to the full image. Excluding would be everything outside of this mask is going to be affected and then normal would be everything inside of this mask would be affected. A few other quick settings to look at. We have add, delete, duplicate, rename, and show hide. I'm going to start off with show hide here. If you click that, the mask bounding box disappears. This can be great if you want to see the image without the mask bounding boxes and uh, those lines and dots obscuring the view. So I'm going to turn that on. Of course, rename is just renaming this. So I'm going to name this as I color adjustment. Then we have duplicate, add and delete. Duplicate, of course, makes a second mask and whatever we have applied to the first mask will apply to the second mask. And you can see that the dash copy moniker is added to this so that we know the two masks have different names. You can also see a difference in line weight. The mask that is selected has a thicker line weight. The mask that is not selected has a thinner line weight. And of course, over here on the right hand side in the tool settings, if I put my mouse over the mask in the image, you can see that it's highlighted indicating that I don't have that mask currently selected. You can see that the name of the mask is highlighted in the settings as well as in the image. So I can select masks over here in the settings by clicking on one of these, or I can come over here and click on the mask in the image window in order to select it. So I'm gonna select the duplicated mask, and of course I can then just delete it. Now let's move down to the spot size. The spot size changes this center dot in the middle. 
So I can increase it to 100 or I can decrease it. And that of course just makes it easier for me to move my mask around. If the spot size is very small, it's quite difficult to grab. If I increase the spot size, it's quite easy to grab, but that may obscure parts of the image I want to see. We'll, we will get into these other settings as soon as we add a tool to the current spot. So I'm gonna go down here at the very bottom of my tool. I'm gonna add a color and light tool. And you can see that what is added is the same exact tool as our color toning tool over here. So I'm gonna shift this color over to green and then I'm actually going to increase the lightness here all the way so that we get a better look at what's going on. And now let's go ahead and arrange our mask so that, so that we have the mask around the shape of the eye. I'm gonna make sure that the center of my mask is around the pupil and then I'll bring this down. Now one thing to note is your two horizontal, your x, your x axis dots here can only go side to side. They can't go up and down. So the center of your mask is actually quite important because that's going to determine where exactly you place these XY dots. The same thing applies to these vertical dots here. They can't go side to side. So that's why placing the center of the mask over the pupil for this particular image is very important. I'm gonna make sure that my mask exceeds the bounds of my eye so that we can see a couple of things. First one is I'm gonna turn off the show hide so now we can just see what's going on with the color. And I'm gonna change this transition value. If I increase it all the way, there's no longer any gradient around the mask. Of course, if I decrease it all the way, it's 100% gradient from the edge of the mask all the way in. So that's not gonna work for us, but it, that is really helpful for transitioning an effect into the eye to make it look better. So let's go ahead and increase this to 100%, and now let's look at the transition decay. The transition decay kind of acts like a reverse feather option. So if I reset my transition value and then I increase my transition decay, you, you can see that my mask is being deleted inward instead of outward. And then of course we have the XY differentiation. So we can squeeze our mask inward by increasing this or we can expand our mask outward by decreasing this. And then we have the feather gradient. And to be honest, this doesn't do a whole lot for this current situation. So we don't really need to worry about that. So I'm gonna reset all of these values. So next let's go to shape detection. I'll open that up. And shape detection really determines what the mask is going to affect. So let's go ahead and turn on the preview Delta E. And you can see that now we see this overlay for our mask and the preview Delta E color intensity will determine the intensity of the color of our mask. So I'm just gonna leave that at the default. Now the scope threshold, if you see I increase that, this increases the brightness or the exposure within the mask area. If I increase the decay, that determines how far away raw therapy looks for brightness from the brightest pixels. So if I turn this down, almost everything in the eye is considered a bright pixel. If I turn this up, only the pixels closest to these bright white pixels are also considered bright. Then we have the AE-L balance. And this I would kind of describe as maybe like a clarity slider. If I increase it, you can see that things get much more muddled. Uh, there's kind of some crunchiness that goes on. If I decrease it, you can see that we get a lot of detail, but we also get a lot of noise. So that's just good to know. And then of course we have the C-H balance. And if I increase that and decrease that, it's a very similar effect because the AB-L and C-H, AB stands for white balance and L stands for luminance. C stands for chrominance or chromasticity and H stands for hue. Uh, all of these values work together in order to edit color. So it's really kind of a balance between these two that you might use in order to get a good result. So you can kind of play around with those on your own. And then last but not least, we have the scope color tools. This little slider, this is just a multiplier for everything above it. So if I increase this, you can see, wow, we have some really blown out pixels. I'll turn off my preview Delta E overlay and I will reset all of these. 
I'm actually going to save the specific cases dropdown and the mask and merge dropdown for a future tutorial so that we can get to the eye color settings. Let me go ahead and drop down here to the very bottom. Now we've gone ahead and made things green. If I turn this off, you can see that we started out with kind of a darker brown eye. And now I've increased the brightness by using the lightness slider. And then of course we have contrast, chrominance, and strength. That's gonna be the amount of color that's added in. And I'll increase the contrast a little bit as well. Look at the noisiness that's in there. So let me bring the lightness down quite a bit and the overall strength down. And now I'm going to shift the color around. And you might have noticed that I, I put the color toning here in the green, but we actually got an, a yellow eye. And that's because we started off with a brown color that then gets shifted with green on top of it, which gives us yellow. So we have to shift this around until we get the color that we want. So maybe Okay, I think I like this color. Let me zoom out and take a look. Let me turn that off and on again. Okay, that's not too bad. My mask is a little bit feathered here, so I'm gonna come up to my transition gradient and I'm gonna increase this value. Increase it out to about there. And then, uh, as you can see, now I'm getting some brightness here on the eyelid. So let me turn on the show hide and bring this top back down just like that. Now you can add multiple tools. So I'm gonna actually add another tool which is the blur grain and denoise tool. If I come down under the denoise drop down menu, I can turn change the mode to, I'm gonna go with aggressive first and you can see a lot of that noise gets taken away right away and then under the chrominance wavelets I'm gonna increase this and that's gonna get rid of those little blue dots that you saw there so if I decrease it we have these blue uh, kind of oversaturated dots I'll increase this a little bit and I'll increase the course a little bit so this has been how to use the local adjustments tool in raw therapy to change eye color. I hope that this has been really, really helpful for you. I certainly had fun making it. If you have any questions, comments, or even suggestions for other tutorials, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. If you like this tutorial and you want more content like this to come around, please subscribe to my channel. It really, really helps out a lot. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next one.